Well, thank you very much for that uh, kind introduction. I want to say how, how uh, wonderful it is to be in front of a, of a, a friendly bunch of faces like this. Uh, I don't often get to, uh, to speak in front of uh, such, a, such a wonderful crowd. Uh, and uh, it's always comfortable uh, when you can. So I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here today. Uh, I'm also very proud to represent Pfizer and the biopharmaceutical industry because I think the work that we do uh, together with policymakers throughout the world is, is uh, really important, very, very important. And there's so much more work to be done. And there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of threats to, to our industry and what we're trying to do. And uh, we, need to, uh, we need to work together to, uh, to uh, face many of those, those problems. <clears throat> I also um, want you to know uh, that I have a great deal of respect for the work that you all do. Um, the multiple challenges that you face uh, uh, are uh, across the board, uh, from transportation to, to uh, budget issues to uh, health care issues and, and, and many other things in between. Um, the four years that I spent in state government in Rhode Island uh, with, during uh, Governor Lincoln Allman's second term has provided me with a, a tremendous perspective that I think uh, uh, has been extremely helpful for me. And I understand better how these uh, challenges that we all face uh, work in providing uh, good health care, innovative and life-saving treatments, and in ways that governments and individuals can ultimately afford. Uh, there's a great deal of activity in the area of healthcare reform today. In this next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, I'm hoping to address one important piece which often gets lost in the shuffle. I refer to the innovative treatments and, that come from the biopharmaceutical industry, and we do this in collaboration with major medical centers and academic centers across the, across the globe. Too often, our products, uh, medicines and devices and other treatments that we develop uh, are seen only as a cost and not a benefit. So if you're a patient, you understand that that's not exactly the case. Um, it, or they're seen as cost, uh, they need to be seen as a cost saver for the overall healthcare system. And that's uh, one of the points that I'll try to uh, um, make here in a moment. So I have the clicker someplace. I put it in a safe spot. This is uh, census data, uh, very uh, interesting census data. And it's an excellent proxy for the uh, aging of the, of the um, uh, society. With roughly 78 million baby boomers now beginning to retire, uh, the kinds of pressures that we're going to feel going forward are, are really substantial. Uh, this just shows plots the number of centenarians, those 100 years of age and older in the population from 1900 to 2000. And you can see this incredible increase in the, in the number of uh, centenarians. And again, it's a proxy for uh, the, the uh, aging of the, of the uh, uh, United States, and of course, this is mirrored throughout the world. Um, medical um, uh, medical and, and biopharmaceutical innovation depends on a vibrant and healthy ecosystem. Uh, now, you'll, uh, you know, various organizations. Uh, you'll have to pardon me, because uh, as a scientist and a biologist, I always revert to uh, words uh, out of biology like ecosystem and all, uh, but uh, I think it's an apt description uh, nonetheless. Many different groups are involved in the complex and uncertain process of creating novel medical knowledge, then linking this to particular diseases and patients, inventing and optimizing new medicines and devices, and testing, manufacturing, and distributing these new medicines to patients who need them. The, the groups who participate in these various tasks include universities and laboratory-based researchers, hospital clinicians working in research, small biotechnology and spin-out companies, and suppliers, but they also include regulatory agencies, prescribers, payers, insurers, distribution networks, and pharmacies. Every part of this system needs to be operating in some sort of a, a, a well-working order for innovation in this country to flourish. The biopharmaceutical industry has links to all sections of the innovation ecosystem. We are all part of the overall picture, and we both foster and depend on other organizations with which we interact. We can't innovate without the rest of the ecosystem, and they can't innovate without us. Legislators and policy professionals are the only other group that have influence in inter interactions with all parts of this innovation ecosystem. But unlike industry, medical innovation doesn't consume all of your day-to-day -day activities, and it may be less clear how the different elements interrelate and depend on each other. 
All too often we see legislation that aims to support one part of this important ecosystem being passed alongside laws that damage and constrain other parts that are equally important. Tax credits don't support innovation if they are introduced alongside major constraints on product prices and revenues. In addition, the large biopharmaceutical companies are good indicators of the overall health of medical innovation. There is no point pretending that job losses across the biopharmaceutical industry aren't a problem if there's an increase in the number of NIH grants, for instance, or university spin-outs. All parts of the ecosystem are essential, and legislation must approach this subject of innovation accordingly. I'll return to that point in, in, in a moment. Now, innovations have, have led to some tremendous successes, and you'll see in this slide, just very simply shows the number of, of uh, cardiovascular deaths uh, that are plotted throughout 1900 to 2000 and beyond. And you can see in the middle of, of, uh, of the uh, 1900s this, this drop in, in death rates. This is, this is obviously um, uh, a result of, of medical innovation, cardiovascular products like lipid-lowering drugs and blood pressure uh, medications. Uh, now, on the bottom of the screen, you'll see the, the numbers for cancer and this, this inexorable climb over the, the same period of time, but a leveling off, largely through, through innovative new treatments. But much, much more needs to be done, obviously. Uh, when you look at diseases of the blood, uh, this offers a wonderful example, I think, of, of, of what we're talking about here. Um, you can't possibly read this, and you're not me it's not meant to be read. But these investments uh, have led to improved outcomes. If you look at the top of the slide, 100 years ago, these were, these were considered diseases of the blood. Uh, and about uh, 60 years ago, they were divided into leukemia and lymphoma, is, is an example. Um, and then now today, there are uh, uh, dozens of, of leukemias and dozens of, of, of lymphomas. And this number is only going to continue to grow as our understanding of the science is, is, uh, is increased over time. This leads to better, more effective medicines, but this also leads to more cost of development of drugs. Yet, as you know, cancer still exacts a huge toll on, on, the, on, the, on Americans and, and, and through uh, citizens throughout the, throughout the world, and much, much more needs to be done in this area. So where does all this innovation come from is a, a really important question. Uh, and this shows uh, NIH versus biopharmaceutical spending and how a big contribution of the private sector makes and how consistent this investment has been over time. If you look at this slide on the, uh, the left-hand side, industry R&D spending is roughly double the amount of money that the NIH uh, invests in research and development. Uh, that's really very, very important. It's also broken down into non-pharma biotech, which is on the top, which is about $15 billion, and pharmaceutical spending is about, is about 50. This is, this is, is a, a very important, uh, uh, this is a very important uh, slide and a very important message because we cannot develop new medicines without this massive investment that comes from the, from the uh, National Institutes of Health. This is what makes this country great, is that we put this kind of investment, public investment, into research and development for the development of new, new theories, new, new molecules, uh, new, new um, uh, treatment uh, uh, paradigms. But none of this happens without the massive investment that comes from the biopharmaceutical industry uh, in, in, um, uh, uh, in, in parallel. Uh, to, to take things from the bench top all the way to, uh, to the clinical, uh, clinical settings.